So today, everybody, we're going to talk about the Spanish-American War, and more importantly, we're going to talk about the difference between nationalism and uh, the difference between that and patriotism. We're going to talk about some uh, ideas of how those are implemented in society, and what are the goods and bads of both. So let's just get into it. So patriotism is the view of your country that you're, you're proud of yourself because of who you are and what you do. Nationalism is almost a pride in what you are not. It's a negative emotion almost because you are proud in yourself because you're not like other people. Uh, patriotism looks at the past, both goods and bads, the right decisions that their country made and the wrong decisions that their country made to learn from the past to make better decisions for the future. It doesn't change history. It learns from history is what patriotism is. Uh, nationalism is different, and we've seen this in different walks of life. Uh, you have the German, uh, under Hitler, had a nationalistic view of their country, and they would alter the past. Uh, they would change how things were, were, were received by the public. They had schools that indoctrinated their kids on a past that didn't happen. Uh, you also even see this in our country. We talked about the lost cause myth of the Civil War. A nationalistic view of the Civil War, and this is legitimately was in the Lost Cause myth, is that the slavery was good for the slaves. That's called rewriting history. It's also rewriting history when you say slavery was an issue in the South, when we all know, looking at primary sources, that it was. So nationalism is changing the past to make you look better than what you were and not making those decisions in the future to make the country better based on their bad decisions. You're just saying you're always right because you're right. It's my house is the best because it's my house. The Patriot view of the house is my house is the best because I'm making it the best house. I am continually working on my house. So those two different views of how we look at our country are important to think about when it comes to this idea of honoring and respecting one's country. Patriotism does this. It also builds for a stronger future while nationalism has been played out in several circumstances in history, and we're going to talk about those in just a minute, and none of them work out well because you're never improving your country. You're saying your country is just good the way it is, and that doesn't offer any kind of improvement. It doesn't recognize the opportunities for improvement. So let's talk about some of these countries that, that went into this nationalistic view uh, and talk about their downfalls. So Rome was an empire. Rome was an empire for centuries, uh, and Rome will eventually fall. Why did they fall? Uh, high inflation, uh, high taxes, overdoing their military and having a bunch of wars that were constantly with the barbarians of both Europe and almost in the parts of Asia. Uh, and this overuse of war and overuse of military, this uh, overtaxed society, and this high inflation causes the crumble of Rome. How about the British Empire? Well, they had a lot of wars, wars for independence of their colonies, for one. They also lost a lot, a lot of money because of these extra wars, and they had political instability within the country as well as without the country within their colonies. How about the uh, Communist Empire? That lasted for most of the Cold War. What happened with that? Well, lots of wars. <laughs> you see a theme here? Uh, they also had political instability. Do you see a theme here? Uh, and that will lead to the, the end of the Communist Party. Uh, so you'll see here that there are multiple points in history where these specific things will come up over and over again that causes the downfall of a country. And that's why patriotism is important because you can recognize the faults of one's country to then improve it to prevent these downfalls. A nationalistic view is, if I'm in Rome, Rome is great. Glory to Rome. Glory to Rome. Rome is great. Okay, good for you, but you're not going to be able to improve anything or realize the faults of what Rome is doing at the time, and that's when you get your downfall. So that just gives you an example. The reason why we're talking about this is because Spain has this nationalistic view uh, of their country, and pride goeth before the fall, as they say, uh, and this causes the conflict that leads to the Spanish-American War, and what comes out of it is their empire is officially a denzo. Uh, so let's get into Spanish-American War. There's there's a couple of things I want you to make sure that you know about, about it. So the D. Loam letter. I want you to think this is just somebody like bad-talking our country. Uh, and we get it. And it's like making fun of our president, McKinley. 
And he's our president. So we're upset about this, that they're making fun of our country, specifically our president. We didn't like him much at the time, but we can pick on him. Nobody else can, right? It's like a little brother. You can pick on your little brother or little sister, but nobody else at school can. Uh, you have the USS Maine. This was that, that uh, ship that blew up and we blamed the Spanish for it. Really, it doesn't look like it, it was them. But regardless, uh, it, it was something that made Americans go, no, and then joined the Spanish-American War. A war that is called, you know, a, a quintet to war. Uh, in other words, a war that is small, and it was small. It was very short, and many, not many people died on the American side. More people died of disease than anything else. So there are two groups of people that we talked about in class. Rough Riders, that's like Teddy Roosevelt's horse-riding group of people, which the horses didn't really get on land because they couldn't swim. We'll talk about that in class. Uh, we have also the Buffalo Soldiers, which was mostly African-American soldiers uh, who got their fighting chops fighting the Native Americans. And that's where they got their name, by the way, is fighting the Native Americans, Buffalo Soldiers. We're going to talk about a couple of battles, and, and, and I'm just doing this as a quick review. Manila Bay was one of the battles where we had seven steel ships and they had eight wooden ships. Uh, that's yeah, that, that just shows you how much more of a beast we were going into this war. Uh, I, I'm going to take a steel ship over a wooden ship any day. Uh, also, Santiago Bay is another example of our dominance in this war. Uh, we had one casualty. They had 323 as well as hundreds of other people that were captured during that battle. Uh, remember, the number one disease or number one cause of death is disease. Yellow fever, we talked about this in class, what it looked like. We also had a bunch of people that died from uh, like expired meat which is, uh, and then finally, uh, one last thing is what, what state did we get out of this? Hawaii. With this said, quick review. You got a quiz coming up. You got this. Peace out.